And something else that I think might be pretty great is Killers of the Flower Moon because the new trailer just came out. Oh, yeah. I've been waiting to see it because the first trailer came out and I was like, I wanted more from it. Of course, we didn't talk about it. But this one came out. I think it delves into more of the you know, the story, the premise, where we're going with it, like the character development, we see a little bit more about it, which I think is pretty great. And it's coming out October 20th, so it's not that far away. Of course, you got DiCaprio, you got Robert, Robert De Niro in this, you got Lily Gradstone in this, you got some great cast, of course, it's Scorsese doing the whole thing. It's an Apple original film, and it's taking place based off a true story, which is amazing, taking place in Oklahoma in the 1920s. And of course, we talked about it multiple times in the show. So I think that at this point, we just got to watch the trailer for ourselves. And then we'll talk about, we'll dive into it. So here's the trailer for Killers of the Flower Moon. It can be Robert okay. Romero. Whose land is this? My land. Well, 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 our war hero has arrived. You made a good choice coming back here. Those days are the finest, wealthiest, and most beautiful people on God's earth. They outsmarted everybody. They have the say. Who gets the oil? Son, I got a question. You like women? <laughs> That's my weakness. <laughs> well, we mix these families together, and that estate money flows the right direction. It'll come to us. Shomikasi. That's how you are. I don't know what you said, but it must have been Indian for handsome devil. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you come here? I work with my uncle. He's still that kid from growing pains. You're scared pains. of him. Oh, he's, a, he's the nicest man in the world. The Osage, their time is over. We got to take back control of our home. I was sent down from Washington, D.C. to see about these murders. We have so many deaths, we've lost count. It's just bad luck. Seems more like an epidemic than bad luck to me. Osage is dying by the enemy. Do not let them die alone. Evil surrounds my heart. You gotta pick a side. I don't even know if you love me anymore. Of course I love you. Then kill these men who killed my family. Did your wife say who she was most afraid of? Don't do something you're going to regret for the rest of your life. I ain't got nothing but regret. Killed. I know, and the thing is, based off a true story where they're actually stealing land from Native Americans and, and marrying them, and, and then and then murdering them when they couldn't get the land because they wanted the money. It's 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 an insane story that they actually brought to the screen. And Score says he has like a four hour cut of this apparently that he wants to show people. I mean, you can't release a four hour cut. I don't think honestly. They're releasing a three and a half hour cut, so I really don't see what the point is. But another thirty minutes. Yeah, but I mean, fuck. It's it's a very powerful trailer if you ask me. I, I think it, the idea of it's amazing. The acting looks great, and I don't know if it's gonna be. DiCaprio's like best performance ever, but it's, it's pretty fucking sad. But I, I love me some DiCaprio, so yeah, he's a good guy. Friend of the show. You got you got to fight that. You got to fight that one uh, reviewer then who said it was his best one. Uh, you know. Yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> take him down. It might be. I haven't seen it yet. It might be. So, Brittany, you know the backstory. What do you think? Do you think this is gonna be? This is a great representation of what we know about the story. And of course, is based off a novel, based off a true story. Or do you think that it doesn't seem like it hits for you? Uh, no, I. I think that things like this in our history need to be brought to light. And I think uh, oftentimes uh, we try to hide the things that we did that are fucked up and terrible. And uh, I know that this is like a specific family, like not necessarily like people as a race, but uh, I think that they're, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that he is bringing the story to light because I would say 99% of Americans don't know this happened. Absolutely. They don't know this existed, you know? Yeah. So I think that it's, it's admirable and, uh, you know, I, I think if someone can do it justice, it would be Martin Scorsese. Um, I read an article that he had re rewritten it or started re rewriting it 
after he realized he was writing it like about like the FBI because this basically is like the birth of the FBI also like this is like one of the first cases of the FBI so in addition to it being this horrifying story where this basically family tried to like move in through marriage and other things to to legally take hold of you know these Native Americans land um, it is also you know the the birth it was like it's basically these people just started systematically dying and you know, it was all in an effort to gain the deed to the property so that they could have control of oil. Um, but in, in that, in the same turn, it was the birth of the FBI, pretty much. Um, so there was two sides to the story, and he was initially telling it from the FBI kind of standpoint. And Jesse Plemons' character was actually supposed to be Leonardo's, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character. Uh, however, once he w started reworking it and wanted to tell it really from indigenous people's side as opposed to from the white man's side then leonardo dicaprio switched roles um and and played the person who marries her and then uh jesse plemons took the uh fbi uh role there so oh, um yeah yeah, yeah i didn't cool, know that right? that's amazing um so I, I feel like uh i feel like it was done well and lily gladstone is you know, uh, she is a Native American and she's very proud of her work there. And I don't think it's just because she's in it. I think she's proud of the justice that it was done to her people and the way that the story was told. So that gives me a lot of hope. It opened in Cannes to a full on standing ovation and like huge accolades. Everyone has reviewed it um, amazingly. Um, so I, I have very, very high hopes. I think it's going to be spectacular. I'm excited. You're right, Spring. That's that's some great knowledge too. That that happened. That change. I know about that change. It's, it's a big. That's a big overhaul of a script too. But if anybody's gonna do it, it's gonna be you know Scorsese. I mean, honestly, I, mean, he's I don't freaking... know how far along he was before he started rewriting. But basically, he was like, I realized I was telling the story from the wrong point of view. You know. Yeah. So then he went back and reworked it. So so cool. I mean, honestly, I think it shows that this is the right move to go because it does a, a human. T it makes it more. It humanizes it more and it also makes it like about the right part of the story because there's a lot of people that were hurt and affected and it's showing their story as opposed to the fbi i mean yeah. I, I could see him doing an fbi movie that seems like something that's totally that he would do and this seems very different from his normal type of movies and it's it's touching a lot of people's hearts i guarantee it will it's it looks awesome sean what do you think about this uh did this trailer uh make you want to go see the movie or are you kind of like uh they could have done more no, I'm I'm excited for it. Um, I I think and uh, I feel very fortunate to live in a time where we can have uh, media like this that are different scopes, different lenses on populations of historical events that historically, when you look at it, like we've gotten very consistently one viewpoint. Uh, you know, which is the 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 white European ethnocentric kind of viewpoint of these things. Um, and you know we're very much in a time where diverse stories, indigenous people especially, are getting the opportunity now to tell their stories and more of a focal point is being put on this. Um, you know, I, I look toward even, um, you know, how, how amazing it was when the show Watchmen taught us about Black Wall Street, right? Yep. And like all these other times, yeah, like this mm -hmm. is just another opportunity to tell a story that we have been shielded from or shamed of um as a people and uh I, I think it's wonderful that we're we're starting to tell more stories of being honest about ourselves and our history and um this is yeah this this look it just looks fantastic honestly yeah. um yeah. you know and uh yeah I'll, I'll go i'll go see this as many times as it takes um yeah yeah, and it's gonna be a limited release and it'll be out to Apple TV. So it's one of those things too. So hopefully you get a chance to see it in theaters before it switches over. I don't know if they're gonna release it like I think they're gonna let it go for a little bit, limited release, you know, release and then go to theater or then go to Apple TV, which will they do. It's usually a very quick turnaround that way. But Mike, what do you think? You saw the trailer? Do you feel the same way? Are you are you feeling that Scorsese is doing down the right road doing this? Or do you feel like like this is like a genre maybe he should be doing more of? I'm having all kinds of feelings when I, when I watch the trailer and when I listen to you guys, Sean, to provide a counterpoint to what you're saying, which is true that there's growing exposure of multiplicity of viewpoints in our society, which is a great thing. Uh, I want to also remind you that we're rapidly <laughs> descending into a horrifying dystopia where, oh, yeah. these, where these, this kind of, uh, this kind of alternative viewpoint is being labeled as a uh, critical race theory yep. and we, and we're, we're being taught that uh the benefits the, all the skills that the slaves 
<laughs> got from, Gained, from their yeah. enslavement. Like it's it's scary that there's two Americas like that. So that counterpoint made as aptly as I could make it. Yeah, man, uh, Scorsese, like working with this guy has to be a finely tuned machine at this point. Like the the uh, the visual style that he ha he brings to stuff is just butter at this point. And for an so old for an old ass guy, like he's still cranking them out. So I think he just knows what he wants. He's got a team that can just fire them, fire them out. And uh, Moose, you know, I haven't always been the biggest fan of DiCaprio. I think his, I think his skills are growing. I think he's becoming a more subtle actor. Um, yeah. So despite the fact that he looks like what Boner from Growing Pains is that who he played? Boner. Um, Boner. I, I, yeah, maybe, no. Maybe. His name was Boner. He, no. He, one, of the, one of the neighbor kids was Boner. I'm not sure if he was. He's looking more like Jack Nicholson the older he gets too. I think more like Jack. Oh. I don't know if it's the lifestyle he lives, but I see Jack. Like he's like the Jack style. But... De Niro mentioned the ladies, and uh, and he, DiCaprio was like, "Oh, you got me." He, he broke he broke character there for a second. He does love the ladies, but like you know, I worked of a certain them. age of a certain <laughs> age only. Yes, so let's, age. Yeah. let's remember. Let's yes. remember that. It let's put that out what, there. It's gonna be a seven hour movie. Like we're gonna watch the whole thing, like the Irishman. Like there's, it looks like they put the exact same filters over it. No. And then sometimes there's a burning building down, so we get the the night <laughs> the night orange yellow the filter. Night orange. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean no, these two work so good. His character name was Luke Brower. All right, Luke Brower. Okay. He was not Boner. <laughs> boner was the other guy. Okay, Boner's was, the other. He guy. was not a Boner. He wow. was a Brower, not a Boner. Okay, well Brower, not a boner. put that to there rest. That's the put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> put, put that Brower, not boner. Boner, put the boner to rest. I want to see uh, it. We want to see it. We want to learn some yeah. history, right? So we a story yeah, I think we haven't, so. haven't heard before, like the Tulsa massacre, Sean. Exactly. Which is, yeah, I think like, it's a great crazy. story. It's crazy that it took until 2020 to learn about the Tulsa massacre. That's big yeah. freaking history. Like, it's scary. I'm happy. To, I'm happy to see this stuff coming out. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked it took this long. I'm really shocked it took this long. But then but that's kind of the way the business is sometimes. People don't want to touch upon certain mm -hmm. stories. But I think that diving, like Sabrina was saying before, the fact that they changed the whole story, it makes it even more impactful. We're going 100%. there. I feel 100%. like if he would have gone the FBI route, it would have been kind of like the soft way of doing it. Business you know, like, usual, oh, we're focusing right? yeah. business as usual, as opposed to actually making an impact and leaving a story on the table that is actually inspirational and makes us think for a second because people forget about that all the time, like forget about their history, but like this should happen. Bad things happen in the past. Let's tell the story, remember it, and then honor people that went through shit that they shouldn't have. So I that have to, one day to let doesn't it repeat again. itself. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. We yes. don't want history to repeat, or repeat itself. Yeah. And so the better that we are exposed to it and understand the, the, you know, uh, ill gotten gains and mistakes of the past, then, you know, hopefully we've, grown as a society enough uh, as mike alluded to to americas uh, unfortunately but uh, you know yeah hopefully we don't repeat things again like that